Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news, discussion, and of course, a whole lot of opinions about Brandon's works and the Cosmere. I'm Eric, and joining me is not Ian. Uh, it's Evgeny living in uh, preservation's perpendicularity once again. It's right here. You can see, and I can. Oh, I should have done that. I forgot to do that. Hi, I'm Argent. <laughs> also joining us is the uh, Her Lady of Perpetual Gators, Grace. Hello, I am Professor Gator Girl teaching Roshar in History 100 <laughs> at Wait, Silverlight University. Does your Does your college do intro classes as 100 or 101? I don't know. I think 101. <laughs> I don't know. And Grace, his uh, video is laggy, so yeah, we know. Uh, and my ISP had an outage that's, uh, like yes, an hour ago. That's true. So, so you you may die in the... The ghost bloods might not want you to be on this podcast, <laughs> Evgeny. I might. I might. Perpendicularity at any moment. <laughs> <laughs> not, only, not only that, but there's a snowstorm heading my way. The ghost uh, bloods control the snow? That's, that's the storm, daddy. That's the storm. <laughs> also joining us is Joshua. Hey everybody, I am Joshua. Yep. Today, guys, we are going to talk about the history of Roshar. Uh and stuff you may have forgotten about the history of Roshar. And we're gonna discuss some uh some some stuff we don't usually discuss, except maybe randomly on Word of Branded episodes. Because we talk about everything on those, the one that comes up. So, I think there's only one way to start this, and it's in the beginning, there was a Tanasium. Probably. Probably. <laughs> Who created slash grew Roshar? Yeah. Ish. Yeah. Yikes. And the storms were pre-honor and cultivation, so that was around then. The storms, the moons, the planets. Yeah. Some um, form of the storms. Yeah. <clears throat> um because I think I think they changed once once uh Aiden Alzium, um shattered and uh, well rather once when honor and cultivation arrived in the system and once again when honor kicked the bucket. Yeah, right. So um one thing I thought was interesting was so we know that the so the planet was there, the storms were there doing their thing, presumably they were invested even then, because a lot of the li a lot of the life on a shard is like kind of working with that investiture, right? Technically, all sixteen shards have invested on a shard, well, okay. right? <laughs> I mean, it would, it, so it's just like Adenalsium's investiture or something like In that. In the probably. beginning, I, presumably. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, um, I feel like okay. that's reasonable because for something like the great shells, they need the high storm, and presumably they need the investiture of the high storm to go through their um, metamorphic cycles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if you, like, they, they don't need the storm for, like, the water and the creme and things like that. So there must have been some some investiture originally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and then there's also the this aspect of the sprint, right? Yeah. So it's, mm -hmm. it's interesting that all the life had to kind of be put there all at once because you can't have sprint without sentient, at least as, as we know them, you can't have sprint without sentient beings sort of making oh, them right. But at the same time, you can't have uh, yeah. a lot of the life that's there without the sprint. So it, I feel like, I guess it must have all come at the same time. Uh, More I or less. don't know if I agree with that. Uh, I feel like you can have a lot of the life forms on Roshar existing before the existence of sprint. Um, it would just so all be crab can't... people. Well... <laughs> How how is that any different? Um, <laughs> you can't have the the huge great shells. You can't have the chasm fiends. You can't have the reshi isles, uh, the taina. Uh, you can't have those massive uh, massive beings because of the whole gravity and 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 yeah. body mass and volume mm -hmm. problem. But you can have you know you can have um, axe hounds. You can have sky eels that don't fly that just kind of slither slither around. Um, you can Land have land eels. Uh, skyless eels um <laughs> you can have all all sorts of kremlings living in yeah. there and none of those species need spread and then over time as 
the Dawn Singers become a factor in everything, and through them, um, spread, the sprint show up. Yeah, the sprint show up. Mm -hmm. Then you can start having symbiotic relationships evolve, and then you and then they give rise to the bigger gray shells, to a more exotic flora and fauna, and things like that. That works for me. You know, so Aiden Alcium did create Spren, right? Initially, do we yep. know that? Do do we know the extent of when Spren began to exist on Roshar? Um. No, I mean it what happened you, back then. So, what are yeah. you shooting for? Like, are you are you looking at whether there were spread before the Dawn Singers? Yeah, or just like I, I guess what I was thinking about was why does this planet have spread manifest like it does, and other planets don't? Like that sort of thing. That's the thing didn't, that I was thinking about. Didn't Chris hypothesize that it has to do with the large amount of free investiture in the system? in the essay maybe he doesn't ring a bell but yeah i would be surprised if i just forgot that www.coppermind.net um, <laughs> essay oh, this so we sucks. we do have a wob that some spren predate the sh shattering of aiden Alzium. yeah but that uh could have that probably just at least occurred after sapient life existed there yeah. that that could easily mean that yeah because the whole thing with uh, the existence of Spren with more than two genders matching the Dawn Singer's uh, views on gender. So this is the paragraph in the uh, essay. I'm going to go into WAB mode so I can show it on screen. So WAB <laughs> mode. <laughs> These storms, by my best guess, predate the arrival of the, the Shard's honor and cultivation, as do many of the Spren. However, the presence of the shards molded and transformed the planet's nature to the point that it is difficult to distinguish what is pre-shattering in origin and what is a newer development. Surely, many of the spren that now exist on the planet have arisen from the friction between honor, cultivation, and odium. So, so they, the shards before. changed it a lot, but it doesn't give us a whole lot of what there was were there before. some spren uh, yeah. before their arrival. I, I kind of think that, I mean, we, we don't know how Aiden Elsia moved throughout the Cosmere. Mm -hmm. Like, we're in, like, crazy land territory. But presumably they created a lot of places. Um, because most sapient beings were not a creation of the Shards. Uh, yeah. In particular, like, Naltheans and things like that. So, I would be under the impression that that Aiden Alcium would just create the singers at some point. Like, I don't, I don't know. Uh, that's that was a long kind time of, ago. Yeah. And that's when Spren would start. And presumably there was some design with Aiden Alcium that he kind of designed things in a certain way, right? Yeah. That is, that is more or less how I imagine all of this going down. Or maybe Aiden Alcium created the dawn singers and also started like a batch of spren to kind of go with them and then over time from the free investiture in the system and from the storms and from the interaction between uh the dawn singers who are naturally closer to the cognitive realm than humans are additional varieties of spren also arose yeah yep. yeah sounds right cool uh and then we got the shattering which yep uh, I don't know. We have word of Brandon on kind of about when that occurred, but I I wouldn't take too much stock in exact timing. No, it's always been a very yeah. loose word of Brandon. Yeah, yeah. He um, said so. He's he's been saying recently, or at least the last two time, times that I've seen it, he said that the the Cosmere like um. Timeline is roughly ten thousand years, which presumably is from the shattering to Mistborn Era Four, ish, ish. Um, but then it's kind of weird because because the Stormlight Prelude is four thousand five hundred years before Stormlight, wow. and Stormlight's supposed yeah. to be in the middle ish, which right. means the shattering was like 
which means the big the prelude of stormlight was like only a couple hundred or thousand years before you know and we have to squeeze in all the desolations <laughs> humans coming from ashen like all that stuff has to happen before well we will talk about all that but uh i mean do do we have a word of brandon about six thousand years before the prelude yeah, we we have that we have a different word of Brandon, yes, that says the shattering happened around 6,000 years before the prelude. Yeah. That one's a little bit older. So yeah. who really knows, honestly, is what that, it comes down to. I mean, the thing is, is that Brandon at signings, he does not have his timeline. And Brandon is not exactly a, I'm going to give you a quantifiable number three hours into the <laughs> signing type of guy. So that's important to realize. So I, I don't think we should take that too seriously. Yeah. Millennia. Before it's surprising problem. that he gave numbers at all because pretty much anytime you ask him questions about the timeline, at least nowadays, he's like, I'll have to look at my timeline. It's yeah. just like, never ask like, a question about timelines ahead. because Brandon will not know the answer. Go ahead, Brandon. Uh, you got your laptop. Just pull it up real quick. I'm going to wait. It's no problem. He's still on his Nexus 6. Mm -hmm. He can go look in his Dropbox. He's still running that phone. It's very painful I did get, for me to... I did get to corner Karen Alstrom at Georgian Con. And that was fantastic because she had her timelines there, and we we she saw wasn't... we saw the wiki. <laughs> you've, you've laid eyes upon it. This um, this is my local divinity, but I saw. <laughs> That's <laughs> Karen Alstrom. I saw the I saw the god beyond. <laughs> Brandon's you, wiki. You, you hung between worlds <laughs> and saw something greater. <laughs> <laughs> it was true. On one end of the table, it was dragon steel and on the other side it was me and like the audience yeah so, so. we we don't really know the extent of the <clears throat> shattering but then eventually <clears throat> honor and cultivation came there together right yeah. yeah uh and presumably they helped making dawn they helped make dawn cities i would guess but it's it's hard yeah. to say Maybe, maybe not. The, like, I mean, I'm the just, singers, the yeah. Dawn singers, must have had a some kind of a culture established, and I don't really think that they need shards to make a civilization, right? But well, yeah, um, but like Kolinar, wind blades of Kolinar, mm -hmm. that would be difficult for. We we don't know the tech level of the singers and the Dawn singers at this point. Yeah, well, we don't know much about this whole like. So you have this thing with the Dawn cities, which are like these, like you look at the. The, geog the geography of Rashar, right? And there's these like weird like rock formations that they've built these cities on apparently. So like what yeah. caused those to form? Were those there from the very beginning? Is that ad nauseum's thing and they just built a city on it? Or was that when a shard? Say, when you say weird rock formations, are you talking about the the strata they noticed inside? Uh, well, not the, not the strata, no. Like the thing that Capsule's talking about when he, when uh, they do the somatics oh, thing. Oh, the, the somatics better. Yeah. So like all these Dawn cities are like built on these like rock formations that are forming a pattern. I feel like that just wouldn't like random. I, I, I've always assumed that the process of creating a Dawn city also shapes the ground so that you end up with that pattern. That's possible. I mean, maybe do you, that's the thing though. Did they, did they create the, does the, does that rock pattern thing come with the city or is that was that there and then they built the city on it? Do you make a Dawn city or do you just like, we don't even, I... what is it? Well, wasn't the point of Capsule's whole thing that if you make a certain sound, the mm -hmm. sand like shapes itself into the pattern. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Which, which it does. Like semantics yeah. is a real thing. Listeners yeah. and viewers, if you yeah. don't know, it is a real thing. Grab the nearest metal plate and a bunch of fine sand. And you and... will get the pattern of Kolinar. That, that's true. That's a fact. That that part's not true. But um So I do think it makes sense that the Dawn singers would have a hand in that if noise was somehow created part of its creation. Well, I mean it's really difficult to say how long Honor and Cultivation lived on Roshar before Ashen was destroyed, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we have yeah. no idea how long that time frame was. Like, you could easily say that maybe the, the singers were just kind of prehistoric. Like, they were there, 
but like they didn't have grand cities and then honor and cultivation came invested things made a lot more spren right and then a lot more of this well actually that leads me to another question uh but just a lot more symbiosis between you know the creatures mm -hmm. there and the spren and then honor and cultivation could have been like yeah, the sapient species, we'll, we'll help them get a leg up so it doesn't take 10,000 years for their societies to develop or something. I I can imagine sort of all of the Dawn Singers basically being in dull form before Honor and Cultivation came. Yeah. And then kind of like a Dawn Singer renaissance with new spren being created, creating new forms. Right, because the whole idea of forms is a very interesting thing that must have came about from... Uh... Ada Nalcium's involvement, so there would have been some spren, right? But well, they then... don't. Uh, they don't naturally have. So the their like natural like non form is not quite the same as dull form, is it? Like not um... quite. It is similar, but not quite. Yeah. Like yeah. Shin, Shin was in dull form, and he was not like the singers that Kaladin interacts with later that are just like non form. You know what I mean? Yeah. There, there are small differences, and obviously there is the thing that even restored singers, uh, such as Kaladin's adopted squad, yeah. have a mind of their own that is more capable than what you see in Doe form. I always imagine Doe form like you know when you're playing a video game and you're like it's some game with like cooking recipes and you like throw all the your like ingredients in and you like see what comes out dull form is like that thing when like you screwed up and <laughs> you just didn't get the right combination and uh sucks to be you now remind me if i'm wrong do we think that the restored singers got forms in that first ever storm because that was yeah. my supposition yeah no i thought i thought they, I thought when we got Venli's interlude, she said that all of them got different forms, that they weren't just in yeah, some non form. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I didn't think I that they were just in dull form. Like, I thought they got forms, yeah. like, that was well, part of the thing. Yeah, that's okay. that's what I'm saying. I think dull form is you know, you just choose any random spread and that doesn't create a separate form. And then if you have a different form that's a specific spread. And then obviously there's like the slave form, which is nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they did, but I am not prepared to. So Kaladin, when Kaladin meets them, he definitely does not recognize, oh, that's a bunch of Prashendi in war form. I guess that's yeah. true. Yeah. But the only thing that, that that tells us is that they are not in war form. Right. Because yeah. Yeah. that's well, the thought... only form Kaladin has had exposure to. Yeah. Well, I thought we heard about it in Venli's interlude because she's seeing all of these singers who used to be in slave form have all of these new forms that she basically spent her whole life trying to find. Yeah, and she's that, like, they don't realize yes. what they have. Yeah, she does scholar, scholar form specifically is the one that yeah. irritates me. They're like, in the, they're giving out forms like candy and Venli's just, we had to work so hard. Yeah, I remember that. But like, so definitely, eventually, they got a lot of forms. I'm, I'm just wondering, like, when the singers got like really super symbiosis y with things. But mm -hmm. again, it's it's hard to tell. The shards could have molded these things, perhaps. You know. Um, speaking speaking Definitely. of the shards, there was something I wanted to touch on a little yeah. earlier, and it is a concern of mine with this direction of honor and cultivation showed up and uplifted essentially sure yeah a, a primitive version of the dawn singers because it it smacks a little bit of the white man arriving in america yeah yeah kind of kind of situation yeah. so i am i am a proponent of the idea of the dawn singers being already an advanced civilization mm -hmm. um with perhaps even the dawn cities I was going to say erect, but let's not use that word. Um, <laughs> shaped. Too late. Yes. That's staying in the episode. For sure. uh, probably. I, mean, I totally get that. I'm just yeah. more thinking about how extensive were singer forms before Honor and Cultivation arrived mm -hmm. and how many spren were there. 
that's the thing that I'm thinking about. And like, but on the other hand, much later, we saw that kind of the singers were a bit warped and changed by Odium. And so, I don't know. It's possible that shards have manipulated them a lot. Yeah. Warped and changed by Odium? I think so. Mm -hmm. But maybe that was just because of the forms of power, that that's what they're referring to. I think that was strictly the forms of power. Like, yeah. you've, got, you've got a bunch of people with essentially, uh, like, an empty socket. In yeah. Them. And if you shove a void spread in there, uh, you get certain things. And if you shove, like, an emotion spread, you get certain things. And if you shove a, a, uh, some kind of a nature spread, you get other things. Mm -hmm. You know what I wonder? What do you wonder? What? I no longer wonder that. But <laughs> I, I wondered... <laughs> Good talk. I wondered for about two seconds uh, whether a, a singer may be able to bond with... Um, one of the big sprints of Roshar, uh, say the Night Watcher. Ooh. Uh, but I don't think that's the case. Because if a singer, Jim Hart, is quote unquote not big enough to house a fused, right. I, the Night Watcher is a little bigger. Yeah. Yeah. I will, uh, to go back really briefly, my, uh, I think the reason I was thinking that they didn't have forms when they. All got fixed. Fixed. Mm -hmm. That's not the right term. Anyways, um, was when Restore. Kaladin is. Thank you. When Kaladin's speaking with them, he notes that they don't speak rhythmically like their um, yep. the others do. Mm -hmm. um, which I guess could just be because they don't know to do that culturally. Mm -hmm. Like maybe that's just a cultural thing the listeners uh, do, and not yeah, like a because thing. they definitely had that like. Connection it always to seemed them. to me like that was something like natural to them that they didn't like this is just like how we talk not a uh, like i learned this growing up kind of well, a thing but maybe I that's mean... not true it, the, there's definitely a cultural component um yeah. and I'm, I'm thinking especially towards the end um after or during the battle for thailand fields um venley was speaking to a couple of singers yeah. uh, when she was interpreting um, to one of the fused yeah. for them. Mm -hmm. um, and I think she was going, uh, you know, they, they were going back and forth and, and she went, oh, um, if you want to show subservience, don't bow because they had just bowed or something. Yeah. Uh, she was like, speak to this rhythm or hum this rhythm or, or alternatively, you could also do that. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's something that needs to be taught to them. Yeah. She yeah. criticizes them for being too, like, human-like and not uh, yeah, I having the... I mean, they they lived for however many years in their life thinking All of like them. humans, right? Yeah. And so yeah. if they lived in singer societies where their parents just always knew how to hum to rhythms, then that would be very natural from like a super young age. And they just didn't yeah. have that, right? Yeah. So I, I think that mm -hmm. makes sense that they didn't. I, I don't think a form... Forms are not the same as the rhythms, right? Like, so having yeah, a form not. doesn't allow you to speak to rhythms. I th they're just yeah. kind of independent things. And, you know, if you just learned the wrong way for 20 to 30 years, yeah, like breaking out of those habits is really I mean, hard. It's like, it's like, imagine you, you wake up one day and there are, well, rhythms you can hear in the back of your head. And, and they... Think like folklore songs. Like you can you can sense an emotion from them. This one is fast and cheerful. This one is fast but angry. This one is kind of calming and relaxing. This one is sad. And you can just like a like a TV or a radio, you can tune or attune to to each one individually, and you can cycle through them and you can hum them and you can you can kind of speak in a little bit of a chant in rhythm with those rhythms but if that is not something you've ever done like you can you have the ability to do that but it's not how you you speak normally not natural it's yeah i think it's just kind of like a language thing like they yeah. they learned a lethe or you know whatever their yeah. usual language was and it's not to these rhythms you know or like how how we nod in in agreement Right, those those things where that might not be 
I say as everyone nods vigorously. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I wonder if it's hard to speak a lethe to the rhythms and not like their natural language. Their ask King Gavilar. Yeah. There's, but anyways, there's this is a way lot off topic of really interesting history. things with singers. You know, yeah. like just the origin of these and uh, how things developed. But we probably shouldn't make the entire episode about the. So, well, singers. yeah. Do Do yeah. you have anything else to talk about before? Yeah. No, I don't. No. I don't think so. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about the well, first event that we well, know. No, no. Yes. I take it I take it back. We might have. Okay. Um uh, regarding the Dawn Cities. Yes. Their apparent connection to so they, they are they are all patterns <clears throat> patterns that you can recreate with music. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. Which that's seems true. to have an obvious connection to the rhythms themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's true. And yeah. there's yeah. this old, old, a little crack party theory that I've always been very partial of, even though I don't believe it for one bit, uh -huh. that the singers just, or the dawn singers rather, gathered around each location where they wanted to have a, a dawn city and they all attuned to the same, like, the, the <laughs> rhythm of Kolinar. Um, and and with the power of their voices and also magic, uh, they were able to reshape the uh, the rocky ground itself and erect a city uh, in in the, the pattern matching. What if we get rhythm. to see that in a Herald flashback? How cool would that be? I think that would be really cool. Yeah, I mean, so so a, a little bit like like how you get the the sand vibrate on a on a metal plate for cinematics, but also three D. Yeah. Uh, I would ask. I would add um, one other thing. I think that's notable is the the singer like culture. They have this like um, their culture is. I'm thinking about the way that they like kind of worship the spring, and but they also worship like the wind and the stone. I believe is what they have. Spring, um, wind, and stone. Yep. So I think that says something about like the. I guess the state of their culture before honor and cultivation showed up. That the honor and cultivation are not like the the center or at least not the only part of their where um, where is that coming from the spread culture. of wind and stone um it's in the eyeless eyeless steely um it's it's, it's not spread of uh, uh wind and stone it is they yeah. they list they, they say something like our gods spread wind and stone or something to that mm -hmm. effect mm -hmm. um it's in some of the song in the, some of the uh, listener songs too i think well the listener um, songs i i mean so uh, it, my only point is just that like they have they had it seems to me that they had some kind of I don't know it's it's an interesting culture that we don't understand very well that's not just centered around like oh these shards kind of came in and and they're everything to us in the way that yeah. I would think of like uh on Scadrial um or their where, betrayal extended even to our gods colon to spren stone and wind yeah, that's that's totally true. Uh, mm -hmm. But they at least had so around the time of events that we know occurred, yeah. uh, they had they definitely had a lot of culture for sure. Yeah, uh, they helped the humans mm -hmm. um, in some respect uh, because we kind of have legend that you know the Dawn Singers helped people long long ago right so that yep. there's there's that kernel of truth in the mythology right um, well there's also the aila steel yeah. yeah yeah talking about hey our our gods said help these people right yeah um and uh yeah so then uh ashen was uh destroyed because uh Surges? Question mark and <laughs> Dawn yeah. shards? Question May mark. Oh uh, yeah. Uh and uh, anyway, humans came to Roshar. Uh, yeah. And yeah, so that that was uh, a time of great upheaval. So uh, man, man, there's got to be a lot of stuff to happen for singers to like evolve and be as advanced as they presumably seemed and stuff mm -hmm. around that time. Well, they, but, yeah. the, but that's the thing is they had a lot of time. Like they had from yeah. before the shattering, yeah. who knows how far back until, yeah. you know, so there's really an, 
as much time as they needed. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm just uh, like, how did the how did the spread work all in all these times? And then you just your, your brain hurts. I think those, you know, hearing this, those early scenes of when the humans first arrive will be a fun role reversal of the singers as the technology technologically and culturally oh, advanced so. that civilization awesome. with yes. the humans as like the barbarians who yes. need help and yes that sounds amazing i like that I, a lot i think that would be a lot of fun i don't know if we are going to get that because there was already an advanced civilization on ashen yeah uh, then again, you have refugees coming over. So refugees exactly are not scary. known for bringing all their tech and society yeah. and stuff with them. It's just like, oh, no. all of our homes were destroyed. We would like homes. Yeah, they, they fled a planet that was being destroyed. I don't know with that the they power were of a bunch. lava, uh, in some way. <laughs> um, so now we've talked about the exodus from Ashen, or what the Vorans would call the expulsion. Um, from the Tranquilin Halls. Uh, but I, I don't know if we need to go into another, wow, that first desolation is crazy, right? Where, uh... It happened really fast. Well, yeah, Probably. so... Maybe. The Maybe. Heralds were Ashenites. Came or to at Roshan. least most of them were. Most, yes, most of them were. Uh, the and... humans need to invade. They need to be invade enough that the they are called the Voidbringers. Mm -hmm. Then also, fused need to exist. The fuse need to fight humans, and then at some point the heralds need to be formed to lock the fused away. And presumably by then there's no more human Voidbringers. And what happened to them? I don't know. Like there's a lot that happened there. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that's that's the short list I think of things that must occur. I mean, so the the most interesting thing there, I think, is the oath pact had to be formed, right? Yeah. Because that's what sets the whole cycle of the way it the, sets up the nature of things, so that the desolations can continue to happen. It, it once, um, once you get an oath pact, the rest is rinse and repeat, right? Yeah. And the the weird thing I think is that, uh, like, presumably they had been murdering fused for a long time, and then they're like. Wow, they just keep coming back. This is awful. So we have to do something else, right? Yep. Uh, so, oh, and how much Odium was involved of the destruction of Ashen? No clue. All of Odium's involvement in this is a lot, but <laughs> yeah, we have, we don't really have any information at this stage. Let me, let me take you back a second. Um, okay. It is not necessary for the humans or the heralds to notice that the fused are coming back it may be enough for them to notice that they are solidly losing this war. Like, from yeah. their perspective, they can just see endless waves of fused coming their sure, way. Okay. And then they go to honor and cultivation, right. okay. and they're like, what the hell, guys? And <laughs> honor's like, like oh, yo, yeah, I got a plan. Recycling, bro. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, that, that... Well, yeah, and how much honor and cultivation did during this conflict like we have no idea what all the three shards are doing in this entire yeah. first conflict and huh yeah it's crazy. so it's interesting it's interesting to me that um it seems like the humans were maybe using surges of some kind presumably granted by odium at the beginning of the yeah. first desolation yeah uh, because that's what they're accused of doing um yeah they so, they come from somehow, another world but then somehow powerful. in the middle of that, now you have the fuse coming back that are of Odium and honor and cultivation switch sides. So there's this really bizarre right. reversal of the shards. Yep. The This accusation you speak of, is that from the songs? I, where it's the, from the, the Isla uh, and Yo. here's what it says. Uh, it says, we all pronounce that differently, don't we? I don't know. I, I don't I, know how that's supposed to be pronounced. Someone got it, upset it is, in it, the left. It is steel. Whatever. I think it's then why stunning. put another E on the end of it? That doesn't make any I, sense. To ah. get a long, long vowel. <laughs> ah, that's stupid. Uh, they came from another world using powers that we have been forbidden to touch. Dangerous powers of okay. Spren and Surges. Capital S. <laughs> <laughs> they destroyed their lands and have come to us begging. We took them in as commanded by the gods. What else could we do? They were a people forlorn without a home. 
our pity destroyed us. I'm just going to read the rest of this because it's cool. <laughs> For their betrayal extended even to our gods to spren, stone, and wind. Beware the otherworlders, the traitors, those with tongues of sweetness, but with minds that lust for blood. Do not take them in. Do not give them succor. Well were they named the void bringers, for they brought the void, the empty pit that sucks in emotion, a new god, their god. These void bringers know no songs. They cannot hear Roshar, and where they go, they bring silence. They look soft with no shell, but they are hard. They have one... They have but one heart, and it cannot ever live. So sad. I am I am randomly reminded um, in, in the line where it says they bring silence. Yeah, uh, of, of Vire. the... <laughs> Vire means he who silences. Oh, really? <laughs> I totally forgot that. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Mm, well... I, I was thought thinking you were going to bring up the uh, silence in the first Katek of Way of Kings yet again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yet again. It's like, oh, the word not, silence. I'm in. Not, not this time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so dangerous powers of Spren and Surges. So apparently there were Spren involved and Surges, mm -hmm. but of Odiumi and not, not, it's not Surge binding though. Because Surge Binding was mimicking the Heralds and the Honor Blades. So it was different yes. from that. But still of Spren and Surges, though. So it's like, oh, God. Uh. I was going to say, we could potentially still call it Surge Binding. It's just a different kind of Surge Binding. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, that's really pretty It's really, really fuzzy. We need more deep history information before we can make a judgment. Because right now, Surge yeah. Binding... Is pretty connected to those oaths and what form these powers took now it's like it's totally unclear or, or not not necessarily not necessarily to the oaths but to a bond between a human or at least a physical being and a sprint right yeah um which i think we're about to talk about in just a minute here um, yeah i'm trying to think we've seen where else have we seen a bond between a cognitive entity and a physical one uh, Sions and yeah and people mm -hmm. we've seen that Sions are more uh physical than spren though i would say they they do have a little bit of mass i don't yeah. know if they are if they are more physical uh but they don't they don't grant any abilities or right. anything of that yeah, sort yeah although they do themselves have you know the ability to float the ability to instantly communicate yeah um the ability to glow things like that uh the the, the non-canonical ability to expand the power of the ai <laughs> in their center yeah to resolve a plot twist at That's the end right. of the book That's cut um <laughs> but yeah. we don't we don't have any of that nature on schedule unless kelsier but let's not go there <laughs> um we don't have any of that nature in Shadows for Silence, uh, yeah, Sixth of the du yeah. well, Sixth of the Dusk a little bit. No, no, not it. No, not no. Sixth of the Dusk. Although, wasn't there a word of Brandon that the thing was similar to like the the thing the AVR? Oh God, brightness. Um, <laughs> the thing the AVR do was similar to on the Hellbond. Wasn't that a a, a wob? I mean, I don't, I don't know. Even if it is, I don't know how like helpful that is similar to what extent in what way i yeah um i do have vague memories of a wob saying that like if you brought someone bonded to a Sion, went to roshar they would get new powers does that sound familiar to anyone else no. this is the problem with ian not being on the show because he <laughs> would be okay, like yes so... i know or no i don't and then it's like okay ian we we're, we're good like that's that's um yeah. skyward skyward release party Oh yeah. Oh wait, 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 uh, we wait, wait, wait. We got it. We got to go in the other mode if you're going to read a thing. <laughs> okay, great. Go. We have a question that says, "Would an AVR be capable of a spread bond?" And Brandon says, "What they do is the same thing by Cosmier terms. It is not as powerful because of that. It is not as powerful because of that. It is easier to shift between people, right? AVR yeah, right, 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 right. 
uh, what you gain is not as strong, but you also gain flexibility, but it would be cosmerologically considered the same thing. Hmm. So your spirit merging with some other spirit? A little bit. They're, they're rubbing elbows. Oh, sure. Can we? Okay, so I found the wob I was referring to. So this yes. is from the words of Radiant DC signing. If an Elantrian bonded to a Sion were to travel to Roshar, would it act like a Nahel bond? Brandon said, it would act very, very similarly, yes, but it would be like, it wouldn't necessarily do the exact same thing. Like, if you got two radios tuned to a frequency, they wouldn't necessarily pick up another radio frequency or things like this. I don't know. That's a bad metaphor. I need to think of a better one. But it would be treated exactly the same way, but it might not grant the same powers. Okay, yeah. Yep, yep. Cool. And... I think that particular wob led to me asking a little later <laughs> on um, about, hey, if you... Because surges are considered fundamental on right. Roshar, yep. and the abilities the Spren grant through on a Hell Bond are tied to the surges. Surges? Surges. Ah, yes, the surges. <laughs> imagine, imagine a magic system where you gain magic powers based on your Google search history. Oh, do you Oh! <gasps> That's that's actually a pretty good pitch for something, actually. Brandon, okay, I got Brandon on speed dial. Just give me a moment. <laughs> See, but what if I clear my Google search history? Anyway, every time I search anyway. Sorry. Oh yeah, and then you lose all the powers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like Silence anyway, Divine, but with search history. Sh- sh- no, no, enough. <laughs> um, uh, so surges fundamental spread grant powers based on that. So what if you went somewhere else where? different power set is considered fundamental such as earth right yes uh where yeah, we consider about this yeah uh electromagnetism and gravity and and strong and weak nuclear yep would a spread bond grant powers based on those forces uh probably yeah. was the answer kind of so then the desolations occurred and there dun, 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 were a dun, lot dun. of them and we actually know there's well, not that many of them. Yeah, that compared was compared actually... to what the Rosharans think. It's a lot well, less. Yeah, right, because the Rosharans, or at least the Vorans, thought there were 99 desolations, right? Yeah. Uh, but or or decided there were 99. Yeah, decided. It's like, oh yes, well, mm, nine associated with the enemy. Nine, nine. Well, they can't have another nine, so it's 99. Yeah, that's too cool. many. <laughs> um, so. Uh, this question came up uh, a bit before because we actually did get timeline information from Brandon, which Brandon said more than 15 desolations, but less than 50. He did. See, my he actually, before he says that, though, he misinterprets what she asked well, yeah. about the 50. And he said more than 15, but not much more. So my, I'm a... I tend yeah. to think that it's like 15 to 20, maybe up to 25. Yeah, there's no more yeah. than, th- yeah. I think there's no more than 30. Uh, and so in that podcast that we did, uh, I was like, oh, I should have done math on this. I did do math on this. <laughs> and so actually in one of the visions, was this a Starfall vision? When Dalinar yes. asks what year it was, I think it was the Starfall yeah. yep. vision. It was Starfalls. And the Radiant says it's 8th Epoch, 337. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I think it would be sensible for the heraldic epochs to be split by desolations. I don't know. That seems reasonable. Or or um, probably more accurate, like the departure or yeah, yeah, arrival yeah, right. of the heralds. Yeah. Yeah, the, like between epochs, you have a desolation, and then peace is those epochs, right? Um, the, uh, the Way of Kings Prime reading that Brandon did for yeah. Skyward Tour mm-hmm. kind of confirmed that as well, because uh, he's talking to like the proto brother Lon about, yeah, right. um, and and they and they name it, you know, whatever you know, tenth epic, uh, you know, and he gives epoch? however many thousand. Epic? Sorry, however I many thousand. I, years. I don't know why both of them say epic. It, it's epoch. Um, that's how In the any word's case. pronounced. But he says he says that, and it's like however many years, and he's like, and and Tom says, oh, it's been that many years since the last desolation. So right, um, I think it's definitely what's going on. Yeah, uh, which also leads to a question of which desolation was Nohadan part of? When did the radiance appear? That that's another whole question, right? 
But let, let's just talk about uh, for a second uh, the how many desolations were there and how long was the desolation period. I, using two pieces of information, that the eighth epoch was 337 years, probably plus more, but let's lowball it at 337. And the last desolation, it was less than a year between. Uh, that that's what the storm father says well oh you're you're thinking the starfall's vision happened just before a desolation well yeah, yeah they in the vision they say that Hark Harke lane whoever the hell that is yeah we have no oh, idea who that is says the desolation <laughs> is coming soon so I... and and he's really wrong he's, yeah, really, he's wrong. really wrong so <laughs> well well if if it's longer then it's even worse in some sense but let, let's assume 337 okay and sure. i just slapped in 0.5 for the last desolation because sure whatever basically through various curve sketching models i like chose an exponential i did i did a lot of things and adding up all the years of the heraldic epochs not even cl including the length of however many years the desolation actually existed i got 5700 years uh 5400 years and then another 5,700 years. I did this a lot. Uh, and I'm like, wow, nearly 6,000 years? That's a lot of time. I have Guinea's uh, face right now. It's just a lot of time. No, uh, I'm just I'm just listening and looking at mm. Eric's cam. I'm not... I'm not... <laughs> I, I, I linked the spreadsheet uh, in that Word of Brand episode. Uh, but, like, if 337 was the eighth epoch, then, like, if, if you're trying to do a curve sketch right then presumably ones before the heralds maybe lasted longer. I don't know. So like in any curve sketching thing, the early desolations were like 700. It was like 700 years between them, which doesn't need to be the case. Because then I also just thought, well, what if I just pick numbers out of a hat? How, how long would the desolation period be? And so through one through seven, I just picked 300, 300, 300, 300. Uh, and then after 337, I just kept decreasing the number. And there, I got to about 3,200 years. So I don't think there's any way for it to be less than 3,000 years of the amount of time for desolations. I just don't see how that's possible. Uh, and like upper end, you can go 6,000 years. So mm -hmm. I, that's, that's reasonable because if we take the very loose non-canonical wob that we discussed earlier that uh there are six around six thousand years before the last desolation you know we now yeah. that we know the heralds were born on ashen probably not a lot of time from the exodus to the desolation starting and well right sure just seems give, yeah. give honor and cultivation a thousand couple of thousand years yeah and then start the whole if thing that. yep it works yep uh so that that's about the the time frame that i think need to occur because i, I can't imagine eighth epoch being anything other than there were eight desolations right or, or something yeah like that. what what else would split it i i don't i don't know what it could possibly be right yeah mm -hmm. let's talk about radiance oh. though because yeah. when did the Radiance come into being? Before uh, the eighth epic, Epoch. But clearly, <laughs> clearly. It's called Epoch, right? Am I going it crazy? It is Epoch. No, it is Epoch. You know what, Eric? Brandon says that you can pronounce the words in these books no, however you want to. No, but Epoch's a real to. word. <laughs> epoch is a real word. I and you know what? Either. We're going to play this and it's going to appear on the frickin' video. Epoch. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. Uh-oh. That's not good. Epoch. Epoch. Hmm. Epoch? <laughs> well, that's not what Lou said. Oh, no. I think it's either, guys. No, it, it is certainly not epic, okay? Uh-oh. Let's move on! Let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about the Radiance! Uh, uh, before maybe. the eighth, one wait, of those wait. things. I was going to say, oh, it's the Aegis uh, ep Epoch? The Aegis? Aegis? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, um, 
So it was before then, but we don't know if that's, we don't know if they started counting those like from the beginning or if there was like a few in before they were like, man, we need to like come up with a better timekeeping system. Yeah, like <laughs> eighth isn't even like necessarily, that doesn't even need to be that one. I mean, they could just ask a herald, but they're slowly going insane. So how, I don't know. I feel like <laughs> if you, by eight, you could count eight times that you were tortured for centuries. I think you could make it that far, but I, I don't know. I think it either has to be since the heralds were formed or since the radiants were formed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but they're heraldic people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, right. If anything, um, if it's also, a later desolation, then yeah. Also, your like the first desolations there. I I imagine there there would have been enough written history surviving across each one to to count to eight. Right. The problem was when you got when you got to the later ones, it was desolation, you got five year rest, desolation, you got two years, desolation, one year, desolation, less than a year, and it's just a mm -hmm. constant war. Well and that's when you start losing your history. I am not convinced that that much history could actually survive. Because uh Because of what Tom says. Well, right. And, like, if, if we even go to the Nohadon vision, like, this is, this is what uh, Karm says in that. Oh, his bodyguards. Yeah, 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 yeah. The dude Dalnar is talking to. Uh, the desolations are well named. I've heard initial counts. 11 years of war and 9 out of 10 people I once ruled are dead. Do we even have kingdoms to lead any longer. Sur is gone, I'm sure of it. Tarma, Ailiz, they won't likely survive. Too many of their people have fallen. Dalinar had never heard of those places. So, like, these were awful, cataclysmic things yeah. that, it, without the heralds, they were just, like, completely broken. They had to, like, mm -hmm. teach people to, like, cast bronze. Right. Yeah. Yes. Um. But I think the numbers might be a little skewed in there, because Alethella was the war nation. Well. So I, casualties there would be higher, I think. Well, well. So this, um, when the Silver Kingdoms existed is another question, right? Because the mm -hmm. Silver Kingdoms clearly existed post Nohadon, or like during his lifetime. That's when yeah. they were founded, right? That's how. That's the sense yeah. I get, or at least yeah. shortly before him. He walked from Abama Bar to Irithru, and like Alethala is mentioned, right? I think. Yeah. Well, and then, and I think we should throw Irithru in the conversation as well. Like, yeah, so when was Irithru made? You yeah, have that's the true. Silver Kingdoms. The Silver Kingdoms. Irithru is is at their center, at least at, at some point it is. Um, and Noadon is there. For the founding of the Knights Radiant, um, he's also there when Erythru is there, yep. right? So yeah, I always got the impression that that pretty much all came at the same time. Yeah, I mean that seems reasonable. Yeah, yeah, because um, in that vision you have uh, Alakavish, who was a surge binder, yep. but like they're, they're like the entire vision is talking about. Wow, we probably need some Wait, structure for these. Yeah, no, they don't. They don't. So in the vision where Dalinar talks to Nodon, they can't have knights yet because the knights were inspired by the way of kings. Yes. Well, mm. that's true. But that, that could have happened in his... This could it, be it, early in his life and late in his life, right? Yeah, it, yeah. it absolutely could have happened in his lifetime. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and in fact, it, it might have been, you know, Nodon did the whole uh, unification war thing that he did because yeah. he was a warmonger in his youth. Yep. And then in his middle years, he does the whole book writing thing that Dalinar kind of yeah, right. tried to suggest uh, in that vision. It's like, what, write a book? 90% of my people are dead. Um, yeah. And then in his, in, in, towards the end of his life, um, we start seeing Radiance emerge mm -hmm. from whatever search mm -hmm. binders are left. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, just, just to be clear, Dalinar's Karm, and he's talking to Nahudan. My apologies. Mm -hmm. yeah, Which, 
Oh my god, that would make it even worse because now you have to throw Ishar into the whole thing. Yeah, right. Yes, because mm -hmm. Ishar needs to give structure to, to the Radiance. Right, yeah, that's right, 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 right. Because there were Surge Binders before. So are we thinking that towards the end of Noah Dawn's life, there was... Right, because Ishar had been talking about uh, founding some knights. There is... Um, I think in Word of Radiance, when Shalan goes to visit Taln and the whole thing with the poison dart happens. Yep. Mm -hmm. No, that no, before the poison dart, my bad. The first time she goes in there to see him. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and uh she hears Amaram in the hallway, she draws in Stormlight to form an illusion. He slams her out of the illusion, <laughs> looks at her and goes, What one of Ishar's knights? Yep. He's right. been talking yeah, about that's right. that's forming right. Yeah. So if Ishar had been talking about, let's say, uh, imposing structure upon the Surge Binders. Ishar, yeah. the man with the best plans. <laughs> the best plans on Roshar. <laughs> 10 we'll out of 10 best it. plans. The only one who's not insane. <laughs> the only one who's not insane. <laughs> um, he was insane, guys. He's Tezum. Mm -hmm. he's, he's crazy. Just, just <laughs> he's in case really... you, if you're a listener, if you forgot... Ishar is the most insane of them. He's the the god priest of Tukar. His his spheres are so scattered. Um, <laughs> that's a great phrase. Yeah. No, so let's say for a couple of desolations, he's been let's say this. So heralds they they do their own thing yep. on their own for yep. a, for a few desolations, and yep. then the Spren are like, hey, we can do this. Yeah. Right. And surge binders join the fray for a couple of desolations. Yeah. And Ishar goes, hey, maybe we can do something with these people. Maybe they can preserve humanity when we are not here. Right. And right. maybe they, like, he kind of mows it over for a couple of desolations or something like that. It doesn't happen immediately. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Noah Dawn vision uh, where 90% of his people are dead, but there are surge binders. Uh, but Yelignar killed a bunch of them. Um, then he does the whole uh, writing of the Way of Kings thing. And then maybe another desolation starts coming. The heralds come back. Ishar comes back. And oh, okay, sure. Regardless okay. of the presence of the Way of Kings or not, he goes, okay, it is time to turn these surge binders into, uh, into, into knights, right? Into, into a formal order. And in the process of doing that, right. uh, either he or Noah Dawn or the now budding knights decide to pick up the Way of Kings as kind of their way through life. <laughs> Philosophy. Sure. Right. Um, and so towards the end of Noah Dawn's life, knights are established. There is another desolation going on. And all of that stuff happens before the Star Falls vision. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, and also, I guess in that lifetime of Nohadon, Rithiru exists now? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, well doesn't, so that's the, doesn't he that's talk That's the problem about... with that whole thing, though, is that he, he can't live that long. Like, Nohadon can't have survived that whole time. If we're having desolations that last 300 and something years, I don't think that Nohadon well, I mean, they're they're. Okay, so there could be a lot of variance between what centuries means for early desolations, mm -hmm. depending on which heralds broke. Like, it, there, there is a lot of variance there. Yeah. Uh, but he, he has to write Way of Kings and mention Urethiru in it. Could the knights have okay. been founded after he was dead? And he just sort of got it started and Urethiru existed before the knights were founded? Is that possible? But then there were oath gates. Mm -hmm. Do we think Nohadon was a surge binder? I think it's possible. Maybe eventually. Yeah. For some reason, for some reason, he is in that weird vision of Dalinar. Mm -hmm. uh, in Oathbringer. Was he? Yep. Oh. They they talk about and Nohadon's like, let's go shopping, and he jumps through the window, and Dalinar's like, 
yeah, he's got this this banner that he can hold on to, but it's still a lot of height. He's going to die, and then he recognizes the glow of stormlight on him. Okay, sure. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. This being said, that's a weird vision. That is a uh, very weird vision, but like... If it is a vision at all. Like, the whole thing with Way of Kings was that he walked to Irithiru, yeah. and normally people don't do that because they go mm -hmm. in the Oath Gates, which has to be opened with a Radiant! Ah! Well, but, but but you can do it with as a surge binder without having mm -hmm. the order of the radiance formed, right? Well, you that need is... blades, right? But you can yeah. have blades while being. Well, maybe. The question of what does maybe. forming the radiance actually uh, entail? How much could they uh, do before that? No, like, no, they... I think I think I think I'm with Joff because the spren mimicked the yep. honor blades. So yeah. from the onset yeah. of the whole thing. I think there were blades. Yeah, yeah I guess that's possible. They, just, they didn't have the orders, and they didn't have the structure of we are the Knights Radiant, here are like our rules, our... And possibly whatever. they didn't have plate. Yeah, it's... Possibly. I, I guess I was just thinking in my mind, swearing oaths, you get more power, blades are one of those, and so that, that's why I was going along that tangent. I'm like, they wouldn't have blades, they didn't have the oaths yet, right? Uh, but I, I can see how before Ishar put that structure and whatever magical oomph you get for swearing actual ideals, then, uh, you know, you, you could still have blades that you just wouldn't get, like, awesome boosts of power when you yeah. swear ideals yeah. and be as big of a badass. Um, Alternatively, <laughs> yes, the other way this could have gone is before the establishment of the knights, Let's anyone with a sprint could have been at let's say like a third level uh surge binder. So yeah. you get yeah. a blade, you get you get powerful surges. And so and, and it's again, dangerous. It's yeah. That is dangerous. Yeah. Uh if you can either trick a spren or if the spren is not as discerning as yep. the other spren. That's that's right. Uh, yeah. or, or if you change your motivations or character or whatever, like that's a lot of power to have in yeah. somebody who is virtually unchecked. I mean, they were kind of checked with the spren, but like Yeah. But whatever kind of. Yeah, like before there was that structure, like how codified was it? Could you like kill your spren? I guess you couldn't because you didn't swear ideals, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like and weird. then how how much in check are you by the spren if there are no ideals? Like well, I think, the, I think... the spren can just go and I then you're Yeah, done. right. I yeah. Sure. Right. But but once once you're bonded, I don't think there are those like Kaladin had to be at least level two to to hurt still. Mm -hmm. Like seriously. Right, right, right. But right. I but I think the idea is that the sprint could like if, if this if you're doing something that your sprint doesn't agree with, it can kind of pull itself away from you and say, Yeah, I'm not gonna let you do this. Yeah. But that's a kind of a in, on on a on a per case basis. Yes. Yeah. Before the oaths. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Weird times. I had an idea. So yes. we know that the radiance, after they were formed, approached the air heralds and kind of went, "Hey, be the patron of our order, right?" Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They did that. So what if this is pretty speculative? But what if? Nohadon somehow got the bondsmith powers and was the first one to sort of go to Ishar and say, hey, we need help with this. This isn't working the way it is. Be the patron of this order and help me like whip these guys into shape. It's possible. There is definitely is possible. some synergy with uh, Nohadon being a bondsmith. Like, I like that, you know, just parallel, you know, I do like that. Okay. And that that would kind of make Town's comment about Ishar's knights. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, like it's it's not that he founded them, but he was the first one to kind the first herald to acknowledge them and accept them, and work with them. So yeah. in a way, not a founder but a patron. You know what's interesting? The heralds after the desolation ends, they gotta like get out of there. It was like, how long do you have to be like, yo, Ishar, I got a problem? Uh, yeah, about that. I know you're killing lots of fused right now with your honor blade, but uh, we kind of need this help. 
Like, when do they do this? How can much you, time do they have? Ishar, can you smash that subscribe button real quick for me? <laughs> <laughs> and so, during the Desolations, uh, we have no indication what singer society is like at all, no. right? Like, between Desolations with no fuse, we have no idea. <laughs> Honestly, I'm amazed the singers were not completely eradicated in like yeah. Desolation 2. That's a good question I've seen before. Yeah. Is like, why didn't the humans hunt them all down? Like, mm -hmm. after the end of a Desolation, like they yeah. had to survive between, you know, all the way till the next Desolation to get and have enough of a population that the Fused could come back and like take them over and build up a force worth fighting again. Um, I think both yeah. societies were just too broken down to even worry about that. Like, 90% yeah. of human civilization is gone. They're thrown back into the Stone Ages, basically. The, singers, the singers probably yeah. weren't too much better off. They were just probably not licking their wounds, trying to get it's back possible. to a place you're, you're where they were. You're just more interested in, I need a place to live after a desolation for most of them. And it could have also been a case of, this is a big world, and there are not enough of us to kill to all of all. them. Like, presumably they were more like 50-50-ish, you know? Like, you're not, are you gonna kill all of them? And also, there were humans who fought for Voidbringers, and I would assume that there were some, there were singers who fought with humans and the Heralds, right? But I mean, that's not clear. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that if there are some humans, clear. if there's some humans fought with Voidbringers, I don't know, I... I can Maybe. imagine that some singers are like, you know, I just want a place to live. Can we just, like, stop murdering everyone? That'd be great. And then some humans are like, yeah, let's actually both do that because all I have is this rock, so I'm not going to be very efficient at killing you guys. You know, like... <laughs> Unless you have the rock. The rock. <laughs> then, then they're great. Did you know the rock is actually town? It's true. <laughs> I I mean their physique is similar enough. <laughs> he doesn't have the efficanthic folds, but you know. No. But he is he's about as, as wide as a building. I, I do imagine Talon is very wide like that. Uh but like it, it is a good question, like what singer society looked like between the fused, because like, would they have forms of power? How many forms they had? Like, it, it's all super unclear, right? I strongly believe they didn't have forms of power. They, Yeah, I don't think so either. Because forms of power, we know... Voidspren. Yeah, they, they come from Voidspren, and uh, when they're talking about ba Edomishram in the False Desolation, they say ba Edomishram's granting forms of power like the, like Odium once did. Right, she, so, had, she had to connect with all the singers yeah. for that to happen. Right, yeah. so they didn't have those, but like, I guess singer so society must have been super destroyed too, because they didn't have those usual forms that they had. Yeah. And like, that's, that's so what, central to the culture. You know what that's I wonder? That's pretty much what I think. Yeah. yeah. What do you wonder? I wonder at which point in the history of Roshar, the world flipped from being mostly a don't singer planet or continent to mostly human. Like, when, when do humans get to live in Kolinar? Because <laughs> Kolinar yeah. was, was a Dawnsinger city. Like, it had to be a Dawnsinger city, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and the humans started off in the other end of the map. <laughs> <laughs> they got all the way to uh, Stormseat. And then they're like, we're putting an Oathgate there. And so the Radiants were there. And that's all human stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a good question. What do we think? Hmm. I always felt like the humans probably took over most of it fairly quickly, but uh, that sounds hard. Maybe not. Um, I'm gonna I mean, go. We don't know how long the first, like, what was the first desolation like? Like, we have it could it, <laughs> it could have been it could have lasted that, okay. centuries. I'm gonna go after the first desolation. Both humans and singers were pretty much destroyed, and so they kind of decided to share the dawn cities because, like, it was the one place of shelter. And then maybe after that, when the Fuse came back, there was some struggle, and the humans ended up being the ones who stayed in there. Mm, the second desolation maybe. could be quite interesting, for sure. 
yeah. in that respect. So do you think that the only singer survivors of the first desolation were the ones who allied themselves with the humans and presumably the ones who like surrendered? I don't know. No. You think no. there were like enemy forces actively out there, just no more fused? I think. And then... I think at the very least there were hostile singers hiding. I mean, and then maybe, maybe so. Maybe what happened was each desolation kind of pushed the line of battle further, uh, further, f- further east. Maybe, maybe. I mean, without the Everstorm, right? You, you, you kill a singer. Odium says, "Hey, I'm going to give you a chance to go back if you're really pissed off." And they're like, "I am." So they, <laughs> they, they come back. They take over some other singer's body, and but then you kill that fused. Once the oath pact is formed, they're gone to braze. So you kind of, at some point, if you, if you are killing the fused fast enough, like you're going to stop killing singers and then they have nowhere to, like you're not, you're not generating more fused, right? Yeah. No. Right. M- most once, like. Once the humans are worn down enough where they're not going to keep attacking further, you just kind of hit this like equilibrium and it's like, okay, we're done. Like we can't fight you. You're not getting more fused, so we're just sort of at a stalemate here. Yeah. So you hit that you hit that point and then things settle down for a while until a herald breaks and fuse come back and we do it all over again. And presumably each time the humans end up getting a little bit more. But at some point, no head on time. They're getting oath gates and stuff. Like Radiance, yeah. they they have both gates. They just plop down in Colinar, like, yo, what's up? Like, so that I, didn't take that long. I feel like the creation of the Oath Gates must have been co-temporary with the creation of Urethero. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like the whole it doesn't whole make map. sense to have a gateway to the middle of nowhere in the mountains otherwise. Yeah, right, right. right, 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 yeah. right. Or yeah. Right. Or at least like after that. Like Or yeah. Yeah. But like Urethero, and... yeah, is in literally the middle of nowhere, so like the only way you have a giant city is with instant teleportation, yeah. right? It's it's not in and... the middle of nowhere. It's in the place closest to honor. Oh, oh sorry. Sorry, Grace. <laughs> let's let's not go there. <laughs> Actually, let's go um... there. Let's ask him some questions. Oh, wait, he's dead. <laughs> no, no, no. Um <laughs> Uh th- wasn't wasn't it the way of kings that talked about the whole place closest to honor? Yeah. It it it's was obvious in... that it's that it had radiance. to be placed there. Yeah, it was... it's an epigraph in Words of Radiance. No, in Way of Kings. Uh, no, it's it's like in the In World Book Words of Radiance. It's talking about. Oh, it's one of Yasna's notes. Is yeah. that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. It's... But it's like the the original in In World source. Yeah. Is it Words of Radiance or Way of Kings? Uh... It's it's some obscure uh, reference that Yasna picked up on. I don't think it's from either. Let me look. Oh. Okay, all right. All right, I got it. Yeah, so where is it? <laughs> all right, yeah. It's requoted in the Vavibrar, line 1804. Oh, um, line 1804, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> look, that's what has enough put, okay? Uh, and uh, the, the quote is, though when he wished Erythero to be built in Alephala, it was obvious that it could not be. And so it was that we asked for it to be placed westward in the place nearest to honor, which once again is an extremely interesting quote for all of the verbiage of built and right? to be placed. Is, we asked to be placed. We asked it. So that always makes me think honor and cultivation built this place. I mean, it, it seems so incredibly difficult for humans to do that, even with the powers yeah. of, of surge binding. Who else are you going to ask, more importantly? Espe- especially with their level of technology and like... Pres- like and the heralds are on Braze, uh, locking up the fused. So, and Alethala existed. So who else are they going to ask? They can only ask Connor and Cultivation, right? Yeah. Like, I think humans might have been like, it might have been like a help will help you help yourselves like yeah. we'll help you build this sort of a thing it's not necessarily like honor snapped his fingers one day and then it like just sprung out of the ground but sure uh and it's also this quote is perhaps the oldest surviving original source m- mentioning the city okay requoted in the vavra bar 
Raw. Line 1804. Line 1804. <laughs> That's right. I'm gonna I'm gonna need to go through Yasna's notes again for any like spicy verbiage and and phrasing. I know things. we've talked about this one on the podcast for sure. Yes. Uh, but like. Okay. Yeah, so, westward in the place nearest to honor, also right next to that valley. But maybe cultivation wasn't there yet. I don't know. Yeah. No. I mean, maybe maybe they just lived there together in yeah. their forest house. Their forest forest house, house. tree house, <laughs> their tree house. Honor and cultivation sitting in a tree. <laughs> no? Okay. Um, brings a brings a whole new meaning to the H and C. Yeah. Excellent. So uh Yes. One thing I think that's worth talking about is the is there the way their the society does collapse. Like I'm curious what how much survives each time, especially after the radiance formed. It's it's interesting yeah. to me, I guess, that the radiance have this like some kind of a organization formed that survives from desolation one desolation to the next and they well i um, think i think it changed after uh nohadon right because nohadon yeah. that's that's what we're yeah. getting the desolations nine out of ten people were killed right yeah. radiance formed presumably less bad and like they had the fortress of urethiru mm -hmm. and the oath gates and like yeah. It was still probably pretty bad, but that's how, like, language could persist and things for a lot longer, right? And Eurythiru was protected against the unmade. Yeah. It, it was a, an extremely defensible, lo defensible location. Yeah. Um, it is above, well, I guess that was not applicable back in the day, but now it is above the, the Everstorm. Right. Um, so... Any anything they wanted to preserve, including lives, could have been yeah. could have been in there with a fully functional Earth hero. Yeah, like yeah, and presumably, like yeah, maybe they lost you know a Dawn City or two in a desolation, but they'd go recapture it, right? I don't know. Just show up with thousands of people through the Oath Gate. Yeah, like I feel like if you have all the knights and you have all the Oath Gates. You're ready for them to attack uh, a Dawn City because, or, or the, an Oathgate City. Yeah, and they're not Dawn Gates, Dawn Cities anymore. Fair, right? right? Fair. But like, if they're attacking, ah, I'm going to attack Kolinar. Then all the Radiants are like, okay, well, are any of the other cities being attacked? Okay, well, you're going there. You're you're gonna fight. We're gonna have a wall of shard plate, and we're gonna wreck them. You mm. know. I imagine the humans didn't spread terribly far from the Dawn cities. Like their society as, after the Radiance, at least, was probably very like centered around. Yeah, uh, yeah. Was, there the were Gates silver and... kingdoms. Like Alithella was a kingdom, and, and right. But like, what are I mean? That's borders on a map. Like it doesn't mean that they necessarily like actually occupied all that land thoroughly. They they claimed that land, right. but did yeah. they occupy it well? No, no, no. <laughs> sure. No, I I see your point, but I feel like. If they were mostly centered around those cities, we would have been looking at like like city kingdoms. Uh, I, I I forget the city states. C city states. City yeah, states. Yeah. yeah. Uh, instead of actual kingdoms. Well, I mean, there's and like even even beyond that, there were probably not enough like living singers to like fill in the gaps. Yeah, but I I, I mean. So Presumably they land. were there, right? They they were there for a long time. Uh, and they somewhere. still yeah. had... I imagine conflict with the singers was the number one thing between desolations, right? I don't know. Would it, yeah. would it have been? I don't I mean, know. A little bit, maybe. I mean, once, once you have Radiance, I really don't see what the singers well, could possibly well, do. Well, you're not wrong. Yeah, that's, that's a good yeah. point. Um... So, Especially without forms of power. I mean, there had to be enough of them, though, that, that when the next desolation comes, like they're all of a sudden a threat, yeah. though. You know what I mean? Yeah, but like I, I think Evgeny's saying that uh, without forms of power, how are you ever going to fight a Radiant in, in those in-between times? Yeah. And presumably, yeah. I would imagine that several Spren were not just like, hey, let's murder them all. Some probably were, but most were probably not. <laughs> That's right? true. Like, that's yeah. not a particularly good thing to do, and presumably Honor and Cultivation were like, hey, don't murder all of them. You know, I don't, I don't know what their involvement would be. 
Um, I could I could see honor being hey if they attack. Yeah. Then, okay. Well, yeah, fine, it's not. Don't don't go after civilians. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Um. Yeah. So it has become very apparent to me that uh we did not get through all the history of Roshar in a single episode. <laughs> I I know this is shocking to you that the history of these massive of this massive world built place we couldn't get through in ninety minutes. But uh I do want to get through the last desolation and then we'll do another episode some other time. And we, we'll t- yes. Can we rapid fire which herald we think was the first to break? Ash. Wow. I'm going Kalik. Oh, not a fan of Kalik. That's, that's probably he does. If, if he is who we think he is, he, he's kind of wimpy. We don't know a lot about the female heralds, so I, I, I can't really say. Kalik seems like a good guess, though. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with either one of those guesses. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Uh, so before we wrap at the last desolation and then have uh, 4,500 more years of history to go through. <laughs> <laughs> Which is less than half, probably. Less than half. L- look, we're, we're doing good, guys. Uh, there's two other questions. The Shattered Plains. And when the Last Legion broke off. Last Legion has to have broken off when the fuse still exists. So pre-Last Desolation. Yeah. Have to. Yeah. It really could have been any time, though, right? Because you have well, yeah, pockets of you have yeah. pockets of singers that are out there. So you have a lot of time where fused exists. So well, but yeah. they were hmm, weren't. Wasn't the last legion like sent far away during the war? Presumably during it, a it, desolation. Yeah. yeah, during a desolation. So it, it so did they feel were probably... like one of the last ones because the fuse never came back to get them. Yeah, that's I. I am. I'm feeling like this was the last desolation. Yeah, or like or the like one the... right before it. <laughs> but really close can the fuse come back? Sure. The, the yeah. whole point is though that they, like they, they pretty much like gave up uh, their sprint or whatever. So they, I mean, there's no way the fuse could have come to get them, right? How yeah, but they it... didn't. They didn't know that. Would you, Would Would you like me to read some? Like they They would not have known that this would have been the last desolation. Right. Let no. Let's. How I'm saying I'm saying even if it's like the third to last, they go off. They like basically rip out a part of them that, so that uh, they're not, you know, fully themselves, and they go off into hiding somewhere. So then another desolation comes, and what does that matter? Like, the fuse can only enter you willingly, and they're kind of like uh, in dull form or whatever, like not really fully there. So the fuse just sort of bounce off them, and they're like, well, we can't use these guys. I guess like they could have assembled some yeah. force and like hunted them down and been like your traitors, but is that they worth probably, their time? They were probably busy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It could have been. It could have been any one of the last ones. Then. It, I. Yeah. I. I mean, I agree that it probably was one of the later ones. It feels like it probably should be the last one. Just. They. They ideas. did say that you know they they specifically fled, um, but the last legion. Uh, the were warriors had been set to fight in the farthest plains. Uh, I guess Natanaton. I don't know. Which, which is which is interesting because it suggests that the, the like the the line of battle was Completely to the west. Switched, right? Yeah. Um, so like, were the fused coming from the sea or something? Yeah. We do have the uh, people coming from the east. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Um, the, the question also of what shattered the planes is, uh, a very interesting thing, especially considering the last legions, the last legion going to fight in these planes and, uh, Eshenai's mom basically just says, uh, this place that had once been a nation and now rubble. And it wasn't them. It was not the singers who broke this place. Well, not the fused. Not the fused. Fair. Yeah, because the uh, listener song says it was not our gods that shattered these planes. Yeah. Okay. So maybe um, humans destroy shattered planes accidentally with dawn shards or something. Ooh, I do. The, like- the last, the last legion goes. Hey, we need to hide. How about this place that just got completely destroyed and everyone is trying to avoid right now? Well, it's actually kind of interesting because the the full quote 
uh, is is this. Uh, the last legion, that was our name then, warriors who had been sent to fight in the farthest plains, this place that had once been a nation and was now rubble. And So when they were sent, it, it was, was rubble. already rubble? That's, that's, my, that's the implication I see, right? Didn't yep. Yasna hypothesize that Stormseed was shattered during the last desolation? Yes. Yeah, that's what she said. Uh, but again, like... The Although she could be wrong. Cause... Yeah. The, the difference between, like, the last desolation and the second to last or third to last, how would Yasna be able to, like, yeah, 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 distinguish yeah. those in a large yeah. time frame? Like, yep. within a century of the last desolation, I Maybe. totally agree with, but, like, I don't think Yasna could perhaps discern that much mm. when the desolations are happening so close. Yeah. I mean, they had Otters. a hard time figuring out when the recreance was, so... <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. exactly. They had... Well, <laughs> to, to, to be fair, so do we. <laughs> well, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> um, Honor's, Honor's whole raving thing about the Dawn Shards, that was closer to the False Desolation, right? Yep, yep, yep. that was near the recreants. Well, presumably. Mm. I it really could have been like the shard. I... Yeah. It could have just been. I mean, um, maybe it's just some like really crazy surge binding before the night's radiant well, came around just... and things got out of control. I think that's too early. Right? Yeah, because yeah. be well, yeah, because like, wasn't not not in a. Yeah. Silver Kingdom. Silver Kingdom. Yeah. yeah so I don't think it could have been destroyed till yeah. after. You, you need you need the city of Stormseed with the Oath Gate. Yeah, yeah. You need the Oath Gate. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of important. Um, uh, so we are looking at post Nodon. Yeah. Way way post Nodon. Um. I really I I have this image in my mind of like. There. Before the last legion, because Natanatan was rubble, but there was another mm. campaign, and they were fighting for Stormseat, and maybe humans are like, "Yo, this city's gonna fall. They're gonna go into Urethiru. We have to stop this." And some idiot uses a dawn shard, and it does not go well, and it blows up the whole place. And problem solved. They didn't get into <laughs> Urethiru. The city didn't fall. Easy. I don't know. They can always lock the the old gate. Well, I guess that's true. Yeah. Uh, but but it definitely yeah. feels like like the entire area was nuked. Yeah, right. It was basically a nuke. Um, worse than yeah. Maybe maybe that was the reason they were sent in the first place was because the fused knew the city was destroyed and the oath gate would be vulnerable. But it, it's locked. Like well, yeah. No, it was. Oh well. Any 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 herald and any radiant can go and just lock the gate. They can lock the gate from Yuri Thiru. Yeah. Yeah. You need you need and you need the blade, right? And like dead blades don't work. So like even if you kill a radiant, like that's not gonna work. Yeah. And but I mean well, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So that was that was the whole mm -hmm. shebang in, in Ulfbringer. They were like, okay, Colinar has fallen. Tack, we've locked the gate. And then Taravangian had to betray them and Malata had to steal the honor blade. Yep. Presumably, but although she didn't need the other well, whatever. But she unlocked the Colinar, the like the Eurythiru gate to Colinar, yeah. so that the singers could get from Colinar to yeah. Well it, it wasn't locked though in the Shattered Plains during the time now, and I suppose they right. would have had a few thousand years to unlock it, but like would they really have gone but, out there to do that? Well it would it was locked it wasn't locked from Eurythiru's side, but the point is they still need oh. a radiant to open it. Yeah. On storm seat side to go through, anyways. So, um, I mean, you can but, hang out there yeah, and yeah, help yeah. a human comes through. And... Sure, but you're 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 on the right track, I think. The fact that it was not locked from the Eurythiru side suggests that they never had the reason to. Like, that's true. I still think it makes strategic sense for the fuse to say to these group of singers, "Hey, go out there, try to occupy this area around this." transportation thing if you can just in case and then they get out there and go yeah we don't really want to do that we're gonna hide instead of fight well that's true yeah, yeah. like that the is, fuse no, had a plan but then the last legion had other ideas that's reasonable yeah and the other really important thing about the shattered planes is the symmetry in the the way they broke mm. yes yeah uh very very strongly reminiscent of the dawn cities and <laughs> the somatics yeah like there was a whole pattern yeah. like instead of a pattern of creation it was just a pattern of destruction right 
Yep. Yeah. Um, although I, you probably wouldn't be able to create anything like the Shattered Plains as a semantic pattern. One, because it's no. too complicated. Two, just the way it looks, yeah. I think, is, is too complicated. Mm. I like the symbolism of humans destroying that place. You know, yeah. like mm -hmm. as as like a foreshadowing, Ashen was destroyed using these powers, and then they did that again, and yep. they're like, "Oh crap, okay. that's not good." Uh, yeah. And I, I like that thematic element that feels good. And the only thing I can think that does that is a bond shard, right? And what if during the pre recreance days, mm -hmm. somebody finds out about like. Let's say the use of a Dawn Shard was not widely known. Let's say the Shattered Plains were shattered by a Dawn Shard. Yeah. But it was like a small group of people who knew that. Right. And then pre recreants somebody finds out, and you're like, oh, crap. We have all this power that's bad. Oh, crap. We destroyed our previous home. Oh, crap. We just destroyed an entire species. Like, another yeah. nail in the coffin. Right. Mm -hmm. there, there's a yeah. whole other thing of... Like, yeah, maybe someone discovered that like a thousand years after the last desolation. Like, wow, what happened here? And then they go to Honor like, what the crap, man? And Honor like tries to like, it's fine, it's fine, it's Reached fine. It's, it's not that bad until like the Recreate's time where Honor's like, no, it actually is really bad. It really bad. was that bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So okay. I yeah, like no, that I... thematic element. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Um... May may not end up being a don shard, but I very much like the humans. Yeah, the I'm... humans doing that, even if the yeah. symmetry lines up with uh, the whole don singer, don city, don I chant. Just... I mean, hey, don shard, don shard. Well, well. Except they had it on Ashen, so even I don't even know what to make of that. <laughs> well, oh god, we should probably have a dedicated. Did did we? talk about yeah. the dawn shards we, we talk about the dawn shards we did, like you did we i don't even i think remember. we did during the amia scouring episode oh yeah so. yeah, yeah. We t yeah we that did turn into dawn shard cast yeah um <laughs> yeah cool any last thoughts of uh the shadow days <laughs> what, pre last desolation mm -hmm. there's a lot we don't know a lot to speculate well, on. Well, yeah, no crap, because we're still here talking, and we're just like, what happened here? What happened here? I, The deep mysteries of Rashar, like, oh, we didn't even talk about the fact that humans and singers interbreeded. Oh, yeah. For one Oh, uh, we don't. We have no idea when the Amians came, if they were native. We have no idea where the Amians came. Yeah, that's that's true. If they did or come. Or how. Or oh, if yeah. they were native to Rashar, like, we, yeah. All of that is just like a wide open thing, but that's probably a reason why, hey, don't kill all the singers, because, you know. Uh, one thing we didn't know about was the arrival of the Iriali. Yep. Oh, God, we totally forgot about that. Oh, my God. Well, I mean, no, but it, but it could be. A separate, they are a separate migration. It yeah. could have been after the last desolation True. as well, right? Could have been. We, yeah, I mean, probably. So. Mm. I Who think. <laughs> I mean, well, the existence of the Kingdom of Eerie kind of suggests. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I think we're going to do another episode. I don't know when. Probably not next week, but we'll see. But uh, we're going to do another episode talking about Recreants, Recreants cast, and the Vorin calendar, the Death of Honor. Haven't even gotten there yet, and yeah. probably other weird things there. Including the Lurnip Famine. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, of course. Emil's Lurnip Exciting. Famine. Yes. Exciting. Don't, just wait for the Lurnip Famine. Uh, before the 80s War. Did you remember that, that the Emil Takari War was called the 80s War? Ha ha, now you remember. Mm. So, Important. you know what time it is, guys. It's time for Who's That Cosmere Character? This character is from Roshar. Menace. Tia. Tom. Braze. Void in drag on a horse. <laughs> it's time for Who's That Cosmere Character? Call. All right, so... Listeners, you send an email to who's that cosmere character at gmail.com with five clues and 
And the answer that is a cosmic ear character refers to, and then I read the clues aloud one at a time, and our panelists get a chance to guess who's that Cosmere character. Oh, no. All right. What? They're a bit laggy. That's okay. I, I thought we did good in this cast of remembering tiny facts that probably most people wouldn't remember about that one thing that one time. So I feel like we did a good job. I feel like we'll be able to get these characters, too. Well, we'll see. We are less good about characters and more good about events. Well, that's certainly true. Events in history. That is certainly true. Yeah. Yeah. This first one was sent in by uh, Essie slash Messy Desk. Okay. All right. Clue one. This character has something that once belonged to another character. Oh. Amaram. It is not Amaram. Kaladin. It is not Kaladin. The man I who would be called Palm. Staying <laughs> on Roshar, I guess. Um, Hoid. It is not Hoid. Yeah, that's true. Clue two. Oh, Hoid's a good one, yeah. This character has no particular fondness of his left leg. What? Does anyone These have clues are getting so good. Their... <laughs> what? Fondness of his. No particular fondness. Y'all. It doesn't even mean anything. It is, it is not y'all. I don't have a particular fondness of my left leg. <laughs> oh, you don't? You don't? I appreciate both of my legs almost equally. It must be oh. a Voren thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I personally like my left leg more than my right one, but why? Are you are you lefty? What? Are you lefty? I don't know. My my left leg is always like the one if I'm not thinking about it that I step first if I'm like climbing upstairs or something. <laughs> I don't even know. I I'm thinking about that. I literally don't even know which foot I use to do that. Like I I I don't even know the answer to that question. If someone said. What foot do you start with first when you go upstairs? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Who doesn't have... No. I'm gonna go with the legendary pirate captain, Captain Argmady. I know it doesn't <laughs> seem like a Cosmere character, but I think he could <laughs> probably have a peg leg, and he could eventually be a Cosmere character. No. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go with clubs. It is Ooh. not clubs. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Clue three. Wayne threw a walnut at this character's head. Oh, no. Oh, it's some constable. Vendel. It is Vendel. Oh. 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 Okay, all right. C clue four. That something mentioned in the first clue is a body part. And this character has an image projector in his possession. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I and, can't and remember like, the hey. leg thing. No, um, shows up at the estate. Wax is like, like pulls a gun on him, and he's like, "If you're gonna shoot me, shoot me in the left leg." Oh, yeah, it's I need someone's to special arrow bones two or something. So bad. If you want to stump me, just pick something arrow too. I'm like, I don't, I don't remember at all. I've never reread bands like ever. <laughs> reread shadows. I did the graphic audio one. Well. That must be nice for you to listen to things. I literally tried to listen to like 30 seconds of a song and I'm like, I can't get like half of the lyrics of this. Like I just, I just well, can't, but I can't with, do with it. songs. It's different. Like I'm, I'm terrible at songs too, but like well, I'm every, every day I go out and I have a, like a 10 minute drive yeah. and I just play a little bit of audiobook. Well, yep. I do a lot longer drives and I don't bother. Let's do the All next right. one. <laughs> this next one was sent in by Gavin Morrison. Hi, Gavin. Okay. I think he's sent Thank in you. stuff before. He he has. This is a familiar name. Oh, oh, oh Gavin. I tried to make a, a Black Prism joke the other time. Yeah, I remember. Okay. Hi. Okay. Clue one. <laughs> this <laughs> character is protective. Kaladin. It is not Kaladin. <laughs> Look, you know what? Uh, Teft. <laughs> it is not Teft. <laughs> Let's go through all the Windrunners. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to be a rebel and, and not guess a Rosharan character. Whoa, how dare you? Um, Kelsier. It is not Kelsier. Oh, Kelsier is good, though. Clue two. This character is sometimes sneaky. Vin? It is not Vin. But is it Vin? 
<laughs> she only takes spears. <laughs> this is Vin. It's true. What's the uh, conversion rate from spheres to dollars? <laughs> uh, we worked that out somewhere. Oh, no. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> uh, somebody asked me that very question. Like, One diamond chip is about $2. Loaf nope, of bread. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, nope. yeah, the loaf of bread comment. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, Sorry. Yeah. Um, I, did I guess? No, I didn't guess. No, you didn't. Uh, lift. Uh, it is not lift. Sazed. It is not sazed. It was sometimes sneaky. <laughs> That's a, going three. in the bronze palace, right? You know, this character is surprisingly dangerous. Surprisingly dangerous. <laughs> it's really feeling like Kelsier, but I guess he's not surprisingly dangerous. It's immediately obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Protective, surprisingly dangerous, and sometimes sneaky. Sometimes sneaky. I was going to guess Light Song, but he's not surprisingly dangerous at all no no he's not no. vivenna it is not vivenna vasher it is not vasher no we don't we don't really see well no he does sneak around a little bit yeah i'm just uh, like who snuck around ever <laughs> you know sill it is not sill Clue four. This character consumes multiple forms of investiture. Oh, no. Cheery, cheery. Should... Yes, it is cheery, uh, cheery. What? Uh, this is definitely the second time we've got cheery, cheery. Yeah, we've, we've gotten cheery, cheery before. Okay. Yeah, cheery, uh, cheery flies into the, like, gemstone reserve after they try to lock her out or him okay. out. I don't know. Okay. Cheery. I'll accept this. And clue five was this character has a shimmering silver eye. Nice. Hmm. Hmm. I would not have helped me. No. no I, no. yeah, I, I do not remember the color of Jerry Jerry's eye. I, I like... think I would have flipped four and five. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Let's Critique Your Who's That Cosmic <laughs> Character. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening to this something of an episode. You know, before we started this, we're like, we're not going to talk that much. <laughs> and yet it, it always turns into, it's like, I don't know. I don't know if we've outlined enough, guys. We need to outline more. We need to outline more. And then it's like, we need to split the episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like, every time. Every time. Yeah. Like, why do we do, like, every, like, the last six episodes we've sat to record, we've been like, this is not going to take too long. We can finish <laughs> An hour and a half we can finish this in two hours and then we are sitting at the three and a half hour mark <laughs> and we're like we need to eat yeah well you know i i think the most amusing one was the keeping up with the colons where we're like eh, i think we will be able to grind through this pretty fast turns out to be four episodes granted some of them were just hour long episodes not yeah. 90 minutes but uh we we hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I, I I really don't think you guys want to listen to us for three hours in a single sitting. Uh, so I I think like an hour and a half, and then who's that Cosmere character? That's a perfectly reasonable length. I'm sure some of you would wish it was shorter, but we want to be thorough. Okay, that's why I want to outline. I just don't want us to forget things. You know, I want us to be thorough. Yeah. And if that we means we get... things with an outline, hmm, we forgot things with an outline. Well, well, to be fair, other things are... The Iriali migration is put at the end of this document, okay? That's true. That's true. So it wasn't Because we were in, doing uh, chronological order, and we put all the things we didn't know when they were. Well, we'll talk order. about it in the next episode, then. <laughs> <laughs> Follow us on 17show.com for all your news, fun games, and fun, and theories, and fun. And memes. And memes. And I memes. know I said fun three times. After the second time, the third was intentional. Uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, YouTube. Uh, SoundCloud... Did I say that again? I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, leave, all the leave us a review on iTunes. And we will see you all next time. Bye. You can Bye. also follow us in real life. Yeah. Oh, come, come to our Discord. Call. I don't think that's what Evgeny meant. I don't think he... he said, I prefer not to be stalked, personally. Call. Gosh, you're so picky. 
I mean, Discord's the one way that they'll be able to follow me, follow me here. Don't follow me there. No, just follow me, okay? It's, it's fine. Evgeny is lonely. <laughs> please, please, somebody just follow me. <laughs> follow me everywhere, please. I'm, I'm very lonely. Call. <laughs>